are you? I'm great today. Good. Hey, listen, I'm going to start off by admitting a little lack of objectivity here. I'm a huge fan of yours, and I've probably read more of your columns than I've read of any single columnist in any publication out there. You are beloved in this town. Well, I'm flattered that you say that, although if you saw my email, you wouldn't necessarily think I'm beloved. <laughs> and again, you know, pe people tend to write when they're angry. That's what I tell myself. Well, you've been, how long have you been writing for the Post-Dispatch? Uh, I, I came to the Post-Dispatch in May of 1980, and I've been writing a column since 1983. So it's kind of a life of never an unpublished thought. <laughs> How did you get started writing columns? I mean, did you always feel that you had something original to say? No, no. Although, you know, I grew up in Chicago, and, and like a lot of families back then, we got two newspapers. I mean, we got... Uh, Tribune in the morning and the Daily News in the afternoon, and that was pretty common. Uh, you know, it wasn't like we were a family of intellectuals. My dad was an electrician for the city, and my mom worked at the nearby Chicago Bridge and Iron uh, Company. She was a secretary. And so I, I grew up reading newspapers, and, I, you know, I, I liked them, and I, you know, thought Royko, who was with the Daily News, was, of course, terrific, as everybody else thought, too. And then when, when I got into journalism, I, I started in Phoenix, Arizona, and I was a reporter, and I thought that was great. You know, it was a romantic job. I, I thought, still think it's really cool. And then I, I came here, and the columnist at the time was Jake McCarthy. And then Elaine Veets was the feature columnist. I remember Elaine. And yeah, and, and Jake was a news columnist, and Jake left to go run a bar in California. And the paper then had the decision they could go out and hire somebody who's already a columnist, but that's more expensive, or they could promote somebody within, which is the cheaper version. So I was the night police reporter, and they had uh, a couple of us write like sample columns for a couple of weeks. And I had this huge advantage that I had uh, a wealth of material because, you know, with my office being the press room at the police station, weird people were wandering in all the time. And uh, so they liked my sample columns, and I got the job, and that was in... Uh, 1983. Why do you think you've made such a connection with your readers? I mean, it's clear you write with a, a real sense of honesty, and, and the readers feel like they know you personally, like you're one of them. But, I mean, in your mind, what's, how was that connection made? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think that as far as people feeling that they know me, they really do. If you write a column four days a week for as long as I did, you, you know, you, 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 you don't have any years. I mean, you have to be yourself or, or you know, what's, you know, you'd be found out pretty quickly. And I, I think that one big advantage I had was that I'm a very middle brow, if that's a word. I mean, I, I'm not a, a, a high brow and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very n normal. And, and so I've always just looked for subjects that interested me, figuring if they interest me, they'll probably interest a lot of other people. Have there have been any people or any columns that were particularly um, interesting to you? Well, I, I don't know. You know, I've, I've always, in, in many ways, been, I, I think, you know, now that I think about it, when I was doing it all the time, I didn't think about it so much. But I think I've always been more of a storyteller than like a columnist with a particular point of view. Like, you know, many, many of my columns didn't have a moral, you might say. I mean, there wasn't some, never an underlying lesson. You know, I, I just enjoyed and still do telling stories about uh, people, you know, like, you know, sometimes people would uh, ask me if I wrote a lot at home. And I said, you know, I, I've, Never written a column at home, you know, even though with, with computers and modems it would be easy to do. But I always thought if I start doing that, I, I'm naturally lazy enough that pretty soon that's all I would do. You know, I'd sit at home and put Kahlua in the coffee and, <laughs> you know, think, you know, what, what do I think about gun control or mm -hmm. something? And, and it, it would just be what I think, and, and my thoughts aren't, you know, really 
uh, terribly original. I mean, there's some people who could probably do that, but I'm not one of them. So I, I like just going out and talking to other people like this. You know, I'm going to write a column today for Sunday, and and it's, it's you know, nothing to do with me. It's just about a old man who sounded the pop- I have no sound. A bank in uh, 2003, and just, you know, the way of the world, his bank, Allegiant, was sold to National Cities Bank in 2005 out of, I think, Pittsburgh, and then that was sold in 2008 to PNC out of Cleveland. You know, I mean, life just, the 21st century just gets really complicated. It does. We're talking with Bill McClellan here. Bill, can you stick around just for a short, after a short break? Sure. We'll-